Wallace Shawn, worried about a lack of financial income and his struggle to pursue his career as a playwright, reluctantly accepts a dinner invitation with an old friend he has avoided for years, the theatre director Andre Gregory. Anxious, Wallace gradually learns where Andre has been all these years, eventually reconnecting with his once close friend through a heavily reflective conversation that explores spirituality, travel, romance, death, and whether everything everywhere is truly connected. This is Louis Malle's My Dinner with Andre, starring Wallace Shawn and Andre Gregory as fictitious aspects of their own personalities, reflecting on a myriad of profound, spiritual and relatable subjects. While My Dinner with Andre may visually focus on the two holding a discussion over the course of an hour and 50 minutes, the film holds attention with its engaging digressions and natural storytelling, with a focus on the charisma of the central actors, recreating the intimacy of a genuine discussion discussion, or even a play. My Dinner with Andre's fascination with interconnectivity also provides much food for thought. Do omens and superstitions hold any true bearing? How does an individual remedy spiritual disconnection? What of the lack of connection to living that Andre Gregory once felt, crying after watching Bergman's Autumn Sonata, regarding the quote, I could always live in my art, but not in my life. The theme of interconnectivity, or lack of it, re-emerges throughout My Dinner with Andre. The the idea of interconnectivity and disconnection is established early on as Wallace, in a voiceover, expresses how his youthful interests included art and music, and now, in his thirties, the interest is money, he is struggling to pay his bills on time, and he's having to take on different jobs, while also working hard writing plays nobody will show. Wallace, it's fair to say, has become disconnected from the optimistic motivation that once spurned him onward into a career within the arts. A contrast to the disconnection is found in Andre's recollection of an experience he referred to as a beehive, a spiritual ritual that connects all participants through improvisations similar to theatrical rehearsals, something he's familiar with. Unsure initially on how to lead the event, he found that once it begun, people naturally moved into rhythms, circular movements and collaborative interactions, suggesting that at the most subconscious level, people seemed connected somehow. Wallace and Andre seem to be opposites, as Wallace is critical of interconnection, using the analogy that a fortune cookie providing a bad omen, warning not to fly, would not deter him from getting on a plane, as the fortune cookie is unable to have any actual bearing on whether his flight is successful or not. The idea of interconnectivity to Wallace is a superstition. However, over the course of their discussion, there is a shift within Wallace, as the restaurant prepares to close for the night, and he leaves taking a taxi cab home, he reflects on the passing streets and buildings of the city, and how they all connect to his past memories. With the intention of reconnecting with his girlfriend, telling her about his dinner with Andre, it's a reassuring moment that suggests that interconnectivity is present in facets of our lives, and that after such a profound conversation with an old friend, there is a sense of renewed motivation, a reconnection with a motivation once lost. Without hyperbole, Wallace comes away from the dinner with Andre, a somewhat what changed man. The performances from Wallace Shawn and Andre Gregory capture a sense of authenticity in replicating two old friends reconnecting, their experiences distinctly different from each other, and yet their human and personal way of relating these experiences often feel relatable, believable, and engaging. While the film may literally depict two men sat waiting for dinner, the mental visuals these two men craft with their performances and storytelling are captivating. Elaborating on this within his review, understanding understandably earning a place on his great films list, Roger Ebert wrote that, What My Dinner with Andre exploits is the well-known ability of the mind to picture a story as it is being told. Both Sean and Gregory are born storytellers, and as they talk we see their faces, but we picture much more. Andre being buried alive, and a monk lifting himself by his fingertips, and fawns cavorting in the forest, and Wally trudging around to agents with his plays, and happily having dinner with Debbie, and yes, enjoying 
Heston autobiography, we see all of these things so vividly that My Dinner with Andre never ever becomes a static series of two shots and close-ups, but seems only precariously anchored to that restaurant and in imminent danger of hurtling itself to the top of Everest, where, Wally stubbornly argues, it is simply not necessary to go to find the truth. As their conversation progresses, our own imaginations fill in the blanks, picturing much more. When Wallace talks about the simple pleasures of coffee in the morning, finding it clear from bugs, it's impossible not to think of apartments with bug infestations. When Andre discusses of the farm, where insects are spoken to, and a deal is made to set aside crops for the insects to feast on, we imagine how these farmers must communicate with these insects. Is this farm a real place? Do insects even have any idea of communication? Or is this a thematic tangent that reinforces the idea that interconnectivity is everywhere? Through these fascinating performances and the imagination they unlock within the viewer, the theme of interconnectivity is once again reinforced. As Wallace and Andre reconnect through their lengthy discussion, as we are drawn ever closer to these two figures, we too experience the sense of connection. In conclusion, Louis Malle's My Dinner with Andre places interconnectivity and disconnection at its thematic centre, allowing the charisma and natural storytelling abilities of Wallace Shawn and Andre Gregory to engage the viewer with their own imagined internal tangents and inner digressions. While a seemingly minimalist film on its surface, My Dinner with Andre aims to encourage a reconnection with one's own life, to remember what once motivated us, to remember what once mattered to us, the recollection of a friend who saw Andre Gregory cry after a viewing of Autumn Sonata over the line, I could always live in my art, but not in my life, reinforces the necessity to reconnect with what motivates each passing day of our lives. And that could be a grand spiritual journey for some, such as Andre, or it could be the simple pleasures and comforts for others, such as Wallace. My dinner with Andre is a humble acknowledgement to remember what it is we've personally found ourselves disconnected from. A special thank you to my incredible tier Patreon supporter Gil and my super tier Patreon supporters Constantin Bombelli and Victoria. 